Right, we continue with our named graph, uh, named graph uh, explanation. We agreed that uh, named graphs is just the idea that having multiple RDF graphs in a single document or a single repository, you know, remember when we add them together, uh, if we have the ability to name them with different URIs, then that gives us the ability, or that gives us some additional functionality, and one of these functionalities, for example, is to uh, be able to get the source or the provenance of any uh, data. Now, whenever we speak, whenever whenever we speak about a set of named graphs, we mean it's uh, just a collection of RDF graphs where each one has its uh, has its URI reference or has its uh, its URI sort of name or something like that. Now, let's have a look at how we can query um, RDF graphs. Now. Um, we have two data sets. We used this one before. You know, with, when we have uh, p uh, people's first names, last names, addresses. I'm sorry, email, email, emails, and uh, then we have some list of courses, and then who's doing which course. And in this data set, now the second one, we have just data about courses. Before we had data about people. Now we have data about courses, just course title, and then you know, course ID, course title, and some details. Yeah. Now, if you look at this uh, simple or example uh, Sparkle query file or Sparkle file. Uh, that, that's our usual prefix, and if you look at like select and your know, last name and course name, and now we're using from the one, you know the one we learned before, and then here we're saying from named uh, this data set, from named another data set. So in using from as we learned before, using from, and we can use multiple from, many uh, from statements in the same file. What happens then is all of those. RDF graphs that we use in the from with the from keyword, they will be joined together in what is known as a default graph. The from name, the from named, however, is usually used with named graphs, and what happens is uh, the, uh, the, the 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 Sparkle engine will only open or will only look at those named graphs, but it will not use them until we tell it to do so, and I'll show you how to tell it to do that, but. You can think of from named here as when we said it, we just open them, just like when you, for example, import a library or import a Java package into your Java programs. You import it, but you only actually use it when you import it. You can you, you're opening it to your source code, uh, or, or you're making it available to your source code. But you actually you you act, you only actually use it when you actually use one of the classes inside it. This is a similar analogy here. You just tell the Sparkle engine. To open or to load or to look at these uh, uh, named graphs, but to use them, you have to explicitly tell it when to use it. Now, to tell it to tell it to use one of these, what we need to do is use the word graph, the keyword graph inside our where close. We need to say it. We tell it that explicitly from that graph. If you're not saying a named graph, and here uh, notice I'm using actually. Uh, a, a local file because we mentioned before that the gra the the the, uh, the the named graphs their names can be URIs and URI can be a path to a file on our local disk. So um, we are saying graph and then we give it we're giving the graph name, which is here our local file, and then with these curly brackets we are running this query now on. Uh, on this graph over here, and notice the whole thing now is inside curly brackets or curly braces. So what's happening here is the following in the in this in this query, we're saying select last name and course name from. So here this will go to our default graph, and the part of the query that will run on our default graph is this part here. So this part here will run on the default graph even if you have multiple RDF graphs or multiple RDF datasets. And then we are using the keyword union. We learned this before, so we can join the results union. And now we are specifically naming the named graph that we are going to use. Again, I keep repeating myself, but just to make it clear that whenever you want to query a named graph, you open it or you specify it like this uh, 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 outside the where statement, right after your select statement or select part of the query, and then inside the where clause we have to mention it by name using the keyword graph so give me last name and course name from this named graph the named graph that you opened there before and then just join the results of these two 
queries we learned the u keyword union before now if you if you have a look at this here we are actually loading or opening or just making this named graph available which is again a local file but there in a comment it says unnecessary why is it unnecessary is because we're not actually using it in our query we're not specifying that uh, named graph in our query so that's actually useless we can get rid of it but before that let's just execute this query and see what happens so if we I'm sorry if we actually execute this query which is uh, number one two six one two six if we execute it if we run it we get the last names of people and course names as we required here as we required here now we can get rid of this as we said because it's not necessary because we actually we didn't actually name it here by name so we can remove it and actually see that the result will be exactly the same again notice that we are actually using the actual file name here well what if we have a remote data set a remote name graph a remote named graph well it's exactly the same thing if you remember from our uh, from our book this book here we can actually go to our sample code and if we load the same uh, data set file which is 125 if we open the same data file which is 125 I'm sorry I'm, I'm a bit slow here where's 125 there you go so if we copy that just to demonstrate that we, actually, we can actually query a remote data set a remote named graph and then we stick that there we just paste it there and there because we need to specify it by name then what do we expect we expect to have the exact same results because we're using the same file but this time from a remote source as you can see we are actually getting the same file I hope this makes sense in the next videos we'll try to see how we can actually maybe create a, a, a named graph and then run some queries against it or maybe rather we'll try to actually do this stuff using Jenna Forsake server to make things clearer and then we'll see how we can run queries against them I hope this is actually making sense it's a nice feature something that uh, we can use to retrieve as we mentioned before provenance or data about uh, about the data that we have uh, as we explained before in the last video another look at the query remember to use the from when you want to specify data uh, this data, the, the data set and you can actually use multiple of them many of them and they will be joined in a default graph these guys here the from named we are querying a, a named graph and we need to open it there and then we need to name it explicitly so we can run this query against it thank you very much for watching and i will see you next time